Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 304, featuring the first in a brand new series of interviews with none other than Alexei Pajitnov, the creator of a little game called Tetris. Yeah, that's right, he's right here, he's on Matt Chat and some really great stuff here. Got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Mr. Alexei Pajitnov. Hello folks, I am here today with none other than Alexei Pajitnov. He's a computer engineer and a game designer, and he's created he created one of the most famous and best loved video games of all time, namely Tetris. So how are you today, Alexi? Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you, Matt. Well, before we start diving into the history of Tetris and, and all that stuff, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit a little bit about what you've been up to uh, lately and what your plans are for the uh, near future. Well, uh, I'm I'm a little bit uh, old already for uh, for gaming I industry, so I'm I can say that I'm rather retired already. But I am still working. I have several uh, small projects running all the time. I have a small team working uh, for uh, we, uh, of my partner, which we, with with whom we work together, and we do several application, uh, several games for App Store. They are there. Yeah, I think there was one called Mar Marbly that came out. Not yeah, too yeah, Marbly is a kind of traditional puzzle game. Yeah, was that the latest one? With the lost of uh, lots of levels, and well, we did we did several uh, several other small uh, small titles after that. Um, I fall, for example, I fall in love with the game uh, called Flow and uh, and its derivatives. Yeah, I see you are a puzzle fan as well, so you probably tried it. Yeah. Uh, Flow, I don't. Flow, it's a. Is that the it's PS4? A, or am I? Yeah, it's an app store. Uh, lo oh, lots, uh, lots of derivatives as well. Uh, it's uh, you. You have several uh, couples of one color dots, and you need to connect them with the line and fill up whole entire field. So, so it's a. Uh, it's also very traditional puzzle stuff. It was invented kind of hundred and fifty years ago, I think, by the Udenior. Lloyd, I don't remember exactly whom, and uh, and that's a very fun game. And we did uh, we, do, we also did some variation called Symbol Link, so that's the other title, and we did several other titles as well. Well, sounds good. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, start getting into the history here. Uh, I, po I posted that I was doing this interview on Twitter and Facebook, and I got a lot of questions along these lines. So this is from David Ar Arcano. He wants to know if you could tell us a little bit about the environment in which you created Tetris. You know, it was this, mm. obviously the Soviet Union. It's it's probably not something a lot of people are familiar with that watch this show. So, I mean, could you just sort of generally describe uh, this setting? Well... Well, I, uh, it was '84, and I did work at computer uh, com computer center of Academy of Science of USSR. So that was the uh, Academy of Science of USSR was kind of Ministry of the Science, uh, generally fundamental science, uh, uh, all kind of fundamental science, physics, chemistry geology, everything. So computer science was one of the sciences and computer center was one of its leading kind of research institute. It called computer center because it provides service for, for calculation for entire academy, but besides that it was a kind of full, fully, fully load kind of institute. And Scientific Institute, I don't know whether people know about the atmosphere there. So, so the, the, it was a very, <laughs> very 
very funny uh, kind of uh, facility full of Russian scientists. As, uh, and uh, in, in computer research, so that was the first kind of uh, place where, where all the hackers start to, 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 to join, you know. So, well, I was one of them. We, we, we have a very small space there. Uh, uh, so everything was packed with some kind of hardware and strange, strange old equipment. And uh, uh, I don't know, we didn't have any kind of certain uh, work hours. Uh, because, and because we were so packed, uh, people came to work at the strange hour. So, for example, usually I came late about 10. 10, 11, maybe even noon, and stay till midnight every day. So that was kind of <laughs> working hour for me. And um, and basically we did uh, all, all uh, people was busy with the more or less serious research in computer science. So that's how it, that's how I would describe it. Well, that sounds, you know, Lexi, when we were talking about uh, the USSR, I saw, you've probably seen that movie Tetris from uh, from Russia with Love, that documentary. Oh, yes, and, and they shoot me, I believe. <laughs> yeah, it is. They, they always make it seem like it was such a dark and gray and kind of scary place. But it sounds like it was actually, I mean, you get you had some fun there at this at this computer center, right? Oh yes, I, I, I have I have I I obtained very good friends there. We still we 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 still in touch and we still uh, we still meet each other and we 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 love to work together. So basically, basically you know, general life was kind of dark, and that is true. Because uh, you know the the ideo ideology pressed a lot, communist ideology for everyone and everywhere, and basically it was no too much of entertainment uh, in, in country generally. It was some, but 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 maybe maybe kind of five times less than <laughs> in the rest of the world. So basically, uh, basically the work was one of the kind of main stuff in, in, value, in, in values and in time spending and everything. So, so that's why uh, the, the, the workplace was, was really important to have friendly and interesting and funny. So that's why we, so that's why uh, that was a good place for me. I don't know. I, 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 I can't remember any, any seriously negative kind of periods of, of my, of my work time there. So we smoked a lot. So every maybe 40 or 60 minutes we we, we we went out and smoke and to and talk and discuss everything around so so, so well we have small ca cafeteria there so we spend some time there for coffee kind of pretty often and so basically basically I can't remember that it was kind of dark and Bracing, bracing environment. No, we, I feel very comfortable there. What kind of access did you have to to video games? I, I read somewhere that you're a big fan of Load Runner. Oh yeah, it was a little bit later. So so basically, we were kind of very serious uh, kind of facility. We 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 do the serious science there and it was lots of big scientists working there and so on. So game was never considered as anything kind of uh, costing some attention, you know, <laughs> you know at all. But somehow, uh, uh, for my entire life, I, I, I love the games and uh, puzzles and everything. And whatever and whatever um, reason I had to 
to to get my hands on the on the games and puzzles i always did and uh, and the excuse was all the time with this uh, with new hardware and software you know we need to test something we need to check how it works how the graphics oh, well we didn't have too much graphics that time <laughs> but anyway so so that's why uh, that's why uh, I uh, w- w- wherever the game kind of show up or, or just just glance around I, I I try to get there and uh, the first first uh, PC start star, start coming to to our computer center and they w- work with the game. And the games was uh, was very very kind of un, unusual for us. So people got attracted, and uh, uh, all the time, all their uh, all their spare time, they try to 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 play and try to to do something. And the first game, as you remember, was was very puzzleish. Every time it was kind of the puzzle element in the game. We need something to figure out. So, and the scientists in in computer center were, were very much kind of attracted with with such intellectual challenges. So, so basically, basically, the I could say that people are. Uh, were very interested and attracted to the game, but general attitude wasn't kind of serious. So people, people all the time understand that this is just uh, just wasting time. <laughs> yes. How would you describe the the state of these computers that you were getting? Was this cutting edge stuff, or was it older technology? Uh. So, so the, the 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 equipment we did work on to make our serious kind of work and research was relatively old, but we tried to catch up with the with the rest of the world. When we when we saw when we saw first first PC IBM PC that time we called that them MS DOS machines. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So from one side they were very, very attractive. They were uh, kind of they uh, they tried to make it user friendly. They had they had kind of beautiful monitors, more or less kind of uh, comfortable keyboards. Uh, they even have mouses all the time, you know. Uh, so so everything looks like uh, like something very cutting cage but but as a specialist we understood that the computer are not kind of way too powerful they uh, as soon as we got to to its guts and start to to, to put some programs there we understood that the, the processors weren't so very powerful and well hmm. Kind of memory, memory were okay, kind of on the level, but not cutting cage stuff. But we were very excited with the huge, huge uh, hard uh, hard uh, hard disk memory. That uh, that was something we we, we never seen before. <laughs> Can you tell me about this computer, the the Electronica sixty mini? Uh, yeah, so uh, Electronic 60 had no, no, uh, b- before Tetris, Electronic 60 did, 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 didn't have any games on it, <laughs> because that was uh, just, uh, just the very first attempt uh, to make kind of personal computer in Russia. It was clone of LSI 11, uh, PDP 11 machine, and um, basically, Basically, it came with the absolutely awful co- kind of uh, hardware around it. Uh, uh, the devices output were, were were just awful in this in the standard configuration. It was a very ancient, awful uh, typewriter called console. 
<laughs> that's that was something which people who who heard about start immediately start to laugh because <laughs> because it it was uh, kind of very heavy very uh, very bad mad ma made machine which uh, which you need to type and that uh, it immediately types and it really hard to to change something impossible to read what it just just taping in and so on so that was uh, was the device uh, which was kind of absolutely impossible to work so so people who bought this machine immediately get rid of this console and uh, and uh, and other stuff and equip it with uh, with the with the monitors which exist that time which was more or less uh, I don't know. Should I explain what monitor means or not? <laughs> the, the 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 display was the specializing device with the keyboard and the screen, which which could produce just the text, uh, kind of uh, uh, twenty twenty by a line of eighty eighty symbols each. And it was kind of microprocessors inside, which uh, which didn't produce any graphics, but only texts on the screen. That what we called monitors or displays, and uh, they produce as a as a separate device. They was kind of at at some point they become the the standard device for computers, and 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 we kept it as as those device for for decade, I believe. So, so as soon as uh, as console was replaced by this display and uh, the the paper type uh, storage device was replaced by floppy disks, those those stuff become kind of pretty much personal computers, which could be uh, and uh, more or less reasonable operating system could be run. And at this point, it starts to be a serious and interesting workplace. And as soon as we were equipped with this, uh, with I was equipped with this uh, with this environment of electronic sixty, I start fall in love with it and and spent lots of time with this with this machine make my measure work and speech recognition using it and and uh, use all my spare time to put together some puzzles and games and Tetris was one of them you still have one of those electronica 60s lying around there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have it in my, in my disposal, but we keep kind of small museum in uh, in Blue Planet Software, our main company, and we have and we have this uh, one of this computer as exponent in this museum, you know. <laughs> so sometimes uh, so used to work, uh, but uh, but later, uh, but now it's some kind of uh, hardware problems with it. it. Just just stay there. So I got a lot of questions about the uh, the Pentomino game. Mm -hmm. uh, Tetris was based on uh, David. Had, he noticed that you were playing with a in that movie uh, from Tetris from Russia with Love. You had this little sort of red Pentomino game you were playing. Oh with. yeah, I could I could show it to you now. Just a second. Yeah, I keep I keep this box with me all the time. Oh, so is that the is that the one? The... Yeah, yeah, it's it's about fifty year old puzzle, <laughs> which I which I bought as I was a boy. I do believe it that. I, I bought lots of them, so I'm not sure which one is this one. So that's the box with uh, with all the pentominos in it. So I could probably take it away and show the the real pieces. Could you see it? Oh, yeah. Put it this way. Those are those are pieces. They are all made out of five square this is a just small plastic piece oh oh that's the camera okay that, that that's the v shape that's the l shape what else i have p shape and so there uh, all you could do out of five square is 
12, uh, 12 different uh, 12 different shapes so no. Look, there's ah, a couple of I, extra. See, I see my my camera is on top of my screen okay uh, so there's a couple of shapes there that yeah. aren't in the Tetris game right oh no no none of them are in the Tetris game it's a pentomino it's five squares and basically there are 12 shapes of them and this is a very cute kind of conceptually very cute set they are all very different they, you 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 never you never mix up uh, one with another and you could play with them as as with shapes uh, you could put together some some design some some silhouettes or whatever but when you try to put it back to this box <laughs> you could spend good hour of trying to fit all the pieces there so as 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 it happens with traditional puzzles so that's the puzzle was about so one time in my life I, I did play a lot with them and I love them and somehow I feel I feel I I understand some kind of mystical property of each piece. I know that that this piece is awful, but but it very uh, but it's very friendly with this piece. So probably they should be somewhere together and so on. You know. <laughs> so so one time I think that it would be probably a good idea to put together a board game for two players using this set. And uh, I want to do it on computer and, st and decide to program it there. So that's the story of Tetris. So uh, at that at that point, I did need to 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 finalize the designs, the the, the rules, everything. I just start 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 put the programs there. But uh, you know. <laughs> To put uh, some kind of ge geometrical uh, game on the computer with no graphics is kind of challenge. So I need to use this this symbols uh, symbols as a graphic elements there. So in order to put the square, I used to square bracket open and close, and that in the line it looks like a square. So the the shape was kind of. Five, five open square bracket and five closed of, the, of those in different lines. So, but but the, you need some kind of routines to to handle all this stuff. So you you need to place it. You need to visualize it. You need to be able to move them, to flip them, to rotate them, and everything is procedure. So I start to put together those procedure for this screen. Very technical task. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with part two of my interview with Mr. Pajanov. A lot of great stuff coming up, so stay tuned. As always, I want to thank you very, very, very much, guys, for your support of the show. It means everything. Uh, if you want to keep these episodes coming, you really need to step up to the plate if you haven't done so already. Uh, remember, guys, I'm not asking for much here, not asking for a lot of money at all. In fact, even a dollar is fine, and I really appreciate it. So if you haven't done so, just go to that Patreon link in the show notes, that very attractive link there, and sign up for your uh, subscription. Any amount you want, how often you want, whatever, it's all up to you, but I really appreciate whatever you can spare. All right, what about that news from the Mat Cave? All right, so I got a pretty good mix of news here. Uh, Shane plays radio. I've, I've mentioned that show a couple times. I'll mention it again because he's got David Beatty on there talking about Mega Wars, and uh, that's apparently going to be followed by Neil Hawford talking about the Star Trek fan film, uh, Star Trek fan films. So that ought to be good. I'll post a link to that in the show notes. Uh, also, Shane uh, passed along a note about a guy named Chris Pranger, I believe Pranger, Pranger. 
Uh, apparently this guy actually got fired by Nintendo uh, just for making a little appearance on a podcast. It's a little sort of minor podcast, but I guess the word got out and Nintendo decided to fire this guy. And I'm really upset about this just because, you know, it's hard enough, you know, believe me, you know, if anybody knows how hard it is to get guests on shows like this, it's me. A lot of these guys won't come on the show because they're afraid of exactly something like this happening. Uh, so I'm not really the hugest fan of Nintendo right now. You know, I don't know the full story here, but that was, uh, you know, wow. You know, couldn't, couldn't they just have suspended them or something? I mean, really? Uh, so anyway, that's just terrible news. Uh, definitely doesn't do much for my uh, love of Nintendo, let me put it that way. Uh, and then also, it's kind of a, on a more positive note, uh, really cool that this would happen now, uh, but the MIT's Green Building, uh, they actually rigged that up to have a Tetris game on there. You know they've done this sort of thing before, Tetris on the building. Uh, this one was kind of cool though because it was multicolored. Uh, I guess they wired the windows with LED lights. And so it really looks, I think it looks fantastic, man. I'd love to, have pl love to play something like that. I uh, just thought that was really cool. Uh, all right, what about that ale of the week? Mmm, beer. Well, this week I've got a little number called the Pseudo Sue. Uh, Pseudo Sue. Got an awesome label on this. Kind of a ferocious look, like a T Rex laser kind of thing. Just looks totally badass. I'm not really sure why they call it Pseudo Sue, though. Let's see, single hop, pale ale, citra hop, blah, 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 blah. ferocious aromas of citrus and mango. Uh, give way to Pseudo Sue's unique and refreshing taste. Pseudo Sue. I don't know what Pseudo Sue means. I don't know what it's got to do with the T Rex. And this is brewed by Toppling Goliath, TGB Brewing Company, tgbrews.com, apparently, is their website. And they do not tell me anything about the alcohol content. Let's see, where is it brewed? Let's see. Colorado, Iowa. I guess it's brewed in different places. Under special agreement with Lakeland, Florida. Now, I've been there before. Anyway, I have no idea what this is uh, going to be. Let's see, pale ale. I guess I know it's a pale ale. <laughs> Supposedly very mango-y. Uh, so anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of the pseudo Sioux here in the rather excellent drinking horn. Been smelling this. Uh, very, very nice aroma. Uh, they weren't kidding about that, the mango and the citrus. Uh, yeah, I definitely smell that. This smells really, really nice. It smells like it's going to taste good, so let's give it a taste. Uh, goes down smooth. You kind of get the, uh, what is that flavor there? A little bit of an unusual flavor, can't quite place, but it's definitely sort of, you definitely taste that sort of fruity, nutty, uh, the hoppy, uh, the hoppiness is there. Really full flavor on this. It's uh, actually quite, quite good. Let me try it again. Yeah, just a really good balance on this. Uh, just a little hint of bitterness, but it's really just it's just an interesting uh, flavor to this. Doesn't really uh, uh, taste as strongly of alcohol. I'm guessing this probably has something like maybe uh, maybe a little bit closer to six, uh, 5.8, maybe 6.2, somewhere around in that that range. Not really tasting a lot of alcohol here. Uh, just a lot of really good flavor. I'll try it one more time. Yeah, just a really, really good choice here, the Pseudo Sue. I'm really impressed by this. Uh, I'm going to go full five out of five drinking horns on this for a pale ale. Really sophisticated flavor, uh, really smooth, uh, nicely balanced. I don't really know how you can go wrong with this. So five out of five for the Pseudo Sue. So let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was looking up for quotations. I thought as long as we were doing a, on these passion knobs, I might see if I could find famous Russians uh, to use for the quotes. And of course, I found a good one from Mr. Uh, Gorbachev. And it goes something like this. If what you have done yesterday still looks big to you, you haven't done much today. <laughs> I, don't know that's, I don't know whether that's more inspiring or just kind of mean. Anyway, see you guys next week.
rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Enough, I get the point.